Now that you're somewhat familiar with conic sections, let's do a summary of conic sections. You have parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas, each with unique equations that create them. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with talking about each one of these individually and then come back together and talk about all the connections between all of them because there's some interesting connections and it's really important to take what you've learned and see the differences between all of them because when you learn each one individually in individual situations you kind of struggle a lot of times when they're all mixed up so here we go let's start over again with parabolas it's gonna go through each picture each conic you have a parabola here's the equation for this one you have two possibilities with the x equals or a y equals y equals or when the parabola is up or down so this one as you can see is x equals because it's side to side you have an hk which is the vertex right there one negative two and you have a value which is basically how wide or narrow it is if it's negative it goes to the negative side if it's positive it goes to the positive side and so we put it into the equation and we have our equation for the parabola now as you can see this negative k negative h do you see here this is k is negative two so you see why this is a positive 2 because it's the opposite of 2. Be careful with that. But the thing on the outside just stays. So H stayed. So watch out for that. And another thing you always watch out for is Y always is relationship to K and X is always in relationship to H. See, X is H, K is Y. They're always connected in that fashion as well. Parabolas are probably the hardest to graph for people. Um, but uh, they're always recognizable because they're the only one with one squared piece. So there's a parabola for you. Talk about circles, which are probably the easiest for people. There's only one type of equation for it. You have h, x with h, x, y with k, and you have the radius. See right here? 2, 4 over 2 up 4 is the center. Radius is 5. Can you see that? 2, 4 center. Radius 5. 5. Do you see how we have x minus h? y minus k radius squared according to the formula circles are pretty nice be happy when you see a circle they're rather straightforward there's only one equation for them all right just find the center find the radius ellipses kind of like a circle but basically you kind of think of them as a stretched circle i usually like to think of them as having kind of like two radiuses you have a small radius and a large radius they're not called radii okay but it's good to kind of think of them that way sometimes can you see how this radius or this stretch is 3 and this stretch is 6? See these numbers 3 and 6? The larger number is always the A. The smaller radius is always the B. Again, they're not radiuses. I'm using that as a terminology. And you see how the center is 3, negative 2? Over 3, down 2. So we have A's, B's, and HK's. And we have two possible formulas. The only difference between these two is where A is. Here A is under the X, here A is under the Y. Okay, you see how they're squared? See how there's a plus, huge, plus is huge, with a 1, equals 1, they always equal 1. Now why is the H in different spots here? Well, if the A is under the X, that means the A value, the longer stretch, is in the X direction. Do you see how the 6 is going left to right in the X axis direction? That's why, do you see here how the A went underneath the A squared? went underneath the X. Do you see here how the B is underneath the Y? So the smaller stretch is under the Y. See the smaller length? If this oval was like this, up and down, your A value would be under the Y, your B value would be under the X. It all depends. The letter, whatever number's down here is relationship to that direction, the letter direction. All right, so it all depends on the bigger value is the longer stretch of the egg or oval. It's called an ellipse. Some people like to use more terminology they're familiar with. Um, so if you have an equation like this, you could graph it, or from a graph, you can make your equation. Don't forget it's always opposites, opposite of h, opposite of k. There's always a plus again, and there's an equals 1. And you always square your a and your b. Those are the denominators. Last one, hyperbola looks very similar to the ellipse except you have a minus instead of a plus and here you always have x or y can be first the a is always the first one but x or y can flip-flop now in this one why do you notice that y is first 
Maybe you can guess why y is first. Do you notice how this is opening up and down in the y direction? That's why you know y is first. If this is opening like this way, x would be first. We'd be using this equation. So whatever direction you're opening, that tells you what letter is first. And then you have k and h, or h and k, depending. Remember, x and h always go together. y and k go together. They're always opposites. Again, the a on the hyperbola is always the first. b is the second. It's not about bigger a and b values. It's just about a is first and b is second. So if you look at this, how do we get these a and b values? Well, actually, how do we get hk? It's the little x right there in the middle, middle of the x. The a and b, well, a, if you look right here, see I went up 4 and 2. Do you see if I went over 2, do, can you kind of visualize a little box here? Okay, with hyperbolas, you make a little box. And your a and b create the box. Okay, instead of like an oval ellipse through that 4 and 2, you know, normally you'd have 4 and 2 would be a little oval right here, a little ellipse. But in this time, you make a box, and then you make these X's through it, the corners of your box. And those are called asymptotes. They kind of give you boundary markers for this shape. So there's, there's be a little box, creates a little X, <laughs> called asymptotes. And those X's give you a boundary for your hyperbola graphs. These X's are not part of the graph. They just help you graph it. Anyways, um, there's a minus. Y is first, so it's going to open up and down. Again, if x was first, it'd be side to side on the sides. And there's these asymptotes you have to deal with to help you graph it. When you graph it, do not touch the asymptotes. They're just boundary markers. And uh, yeah, so hyperbolas. Now let's talk about all of them again. Parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. These two are very, very similar, except a plus or a minus. Okay, They're graphed kind of similar. The a and b, except on this time you make a box with a and b. This one, A and B, are the edges, and you just make a circle, an oval, not a circle, but a circleish, ovalish shape called an ellipse. So plus or minus. H and K are the similar things. You just on this one, you got to make sure the X or Y um, tells you which direction you're opening. Here, your bigger value tells you which direction you're going. See the bigger, the six squared is 36. Underneath the X goes in the X direction. So the bigger denominator tells you which direction the bigger stretch is. The, f the uh, denominators here just tell you how to make the box. But the first letter tells you which way it opens. So you might need to pause and rewind what I'm talking about, because sometimes it gets a little confusing. Um, that's what's cool about video. You could pause, you could rewind what I just said. Anyway, circles look kind of like the ellipse, except there's no denominator. The radius is just here. Something you could think about is the ellipse is basically taking this radius and breaking it up into two radii. So you're kind of dividing the r over underneath both. It's, if that confuses you, ignore what I just said. It, but it, it can be useful for understanding why you have two bottoms. It's because the radius got kind of divided out and become a one, divided between two different pieces. Anyways, it, just, it can help. Hopefully that kind of makes some sense. If not, it's not a big deal. And you have your parabola, again, left or right, up or down, different direction, it opens only one squared piece um, on the parabola. It could be x equals or y equals again. But it's the most unique looking of all of them. So hopefully this helps bring them all together, all the shapes together into one big, happy, conic section family. Um, again, be happy with these. Be able to make the equation from the graph. Make sure you can maybe, from a equation make the graph and make sure you can see the difference between all of them and the similarities it really can help um, when you're getting random questions about them now what about applications of conic sections there are some really cool applications a pr all these shapes have something called focal points there's the focal point there's some focal points here in red and there are some focal points and they have very reflective or refractive properties. Let's say this is a lens, like a magnifying glass. If light comes along, when it hits that, it'll refract to the focal point. All light that comes directly along will refract to the focal point. Thus, you can burn things or you can focus for eyes and contact lenses and magnifying glasses. It can help. All light gets refracted. Now, if you think of this as a mirror from this side, 
any light that comes hits the mirror reflects into the focal point. No matter if it comes straight in, it'll go straight in there and reflect flex into there. That focal point is very useful for many things and reflections and refractions are everywhere in life. So these focal points, what's cool about these two focal points is if you made like a pool table, all right, and say put a hole right here and put your ball right there, you hit it against any wall and it goes in that hole. Just hit it anywhere you want and it goes in. It's like that dummy proof pool table. As long as you don't put English on it spin to make it turn or something, as long as you hit it anywhere you go in. It's, it's pretty cool. Another thing is like if you have an office, you know the president of the Oval Office, if you have a chair here and a chair here, everything you say bounces off the wall and reflects to this person. And this person bounces off and reflects to you. So you two could have a conversation with a whole bunch of people in the room and you could just have a conversation with all your voices reflecting off all the walls. Kind of trippy, but it's kind of interesting how reflection of voices as well as light can happen. On this one, uh, if you take a look at this one, if you have this like hyperbola and you aim at this focal point so see this guy aiming right here at this one but when it hits here it'll bounce to that so as long as you aim at this one it will hit this one all right which is kind of interesting here if i'm aiming at this one it hits and it'll go over to this one it, like act like you got rid of that hyperbola so if you aim here it reflect there so if i aim like boom it'll go there if i'm aiming right here at this one boom it'll go to that focal point all these shapes, all this reflection stuff is really, really useful in life um, and really interesting to me and, and hopefully to you. Hopefully this helps a lot.